Hello everyone, I am Dr. Abhishek Mahajan, Associate Professor at the Department of Diagnostic Radiology, Tata Memorial Center, Mumbai. Today, we will be discussing imaging in laryngeal cancers. As we all know that imaging plays an important complementary role to clinical evaluation and endoscopic biopsy in evaluation of laryngeal malignancy. A vast majority of these malignancies are squamous cell carcinoma. Cross-sectional imaging using contrast and CT and MRI allows excellent depiction of the integrated anatomy of larynx. Moreover, addition of the PET CT provides vital information in regard to the cervical node status, systemic metastasis, and any synchronous malignancies. Additional imaging based parameters like tumor volume and cartilages involvement have been used to predict outcomes in these patients. In this lecture, we will review the currently used imaging techniques and protocols, the key anatomical structures relevant to patients with larger malignancies. Coming on to the imaging modality of choice. We all know that CCT because of its advantage of speed of acquisition, limited amount of motion artifacts forms the basis for imaging modality of choice for imaging of laryngeal malignancies. MR is used as a problem solving tool for cartilage involvement, especially in young individuals where the cartilage is not ossified. However, motion artifacts and long acquisition times are the limitation for widespread application of MRI. Metastatic and nodal mapping burden is done by PET CCT, especially in advanced laryngeal malignancies and patients with lower bugular nodal disease. We must know that laryngeal spaces and cartilages are only seen on imaging and are not appreciated on scopy, hence imaging is very important in management of the laryngeal malignancies. The larynx is divided into three parts, the supraglottis, glottis and the subglottis. The coronal reformatted images shown over here demonstrate the supraglottis, glottis and subglottis as defined by the level of the ventricular complex that is the false vocal cord that FC, true vocal cord PC and the intervening ventricle. The space between the two red lines highlights the glottic region. The space superior to it is the supraglottis and the space inferior to it is the subglottis. Let's move on to the axial anatomy on CT for the larynx. In the figure A, we can see the white line shows the hyoid bone. The medially placed white structure that is the white line is shown by the yellow arrow that is the thyroid cartilage and this is the most superior cranial most extent of the larynx. This is the area of the supraglottis which constitutes the pre-epiglottic space, epiglottis and the pyriform sinuses. In the figure B, we can see the pyriform sinuses distended very well and is highlighted by the dashed white arrow. The yellow arrow demarcates the area epiglottic fold and the orange arrow shows the unossified thyroid cartilage. The fat medial to the thyroid cartilage is the pre-epiglottic space fat which merges further down as seen on the figure C into the false vocal cord and forms the paraglottic space fat. Now we can see partially ossified cartilage, thyroid cartilage and the posterior uh, yellow highlighted area is the superior aspect of the arytenoid cartilage. As we move further down, we can see the false vocal cords with the paraglottic space fat highlighted by the red arrow and the false vocal cord highlighted by the white arrow. The vocal process is appreciated in these cuts. The, uh, when the vocal process uh, forms the uh, cricoretinoid joint and gives origin to the vocalis muscle as seen in the figure E, this is the level which is the level of the glottic region. As we move further down, we can see the superior aspect of the subglottis in the figure F which is highlighted by the superior aspect of the cricoid cartilage. As we move further down in the figure G, we can appreciate the true subglottic region. So how to differentiate these three regions, the supraglottis, glottis and the subglottis on the basis of the pattern of the lumen. The lumen in the supraglottic region is triangular, the lumen is oval in the glottic region and the lumen is round in the subglottic region. Another important structure which is the pre-epiglottic space is demarcated by the anteriorly the thyrohyoid membrane which extends between the hyoid and the thyroid cartilage and the pre-epiglottic space constitutes fat. Posteriorly it is by, bounded by the hyoepiglottic ligament which takes origin from the thyroid cartilage. The T-staging is very important uh, for the laryngeal malignancies and they have an uh, implication on the outcomes. The T1 stage is the state which is only one subsite involvement. The T2 stage constitutes more than two subsites involvement. It's important to note that the T3 stage is very important where the spaces involvement starts to come and play important role in the management. The paraglottic and the pre-epiglottic space involvement which leads or there is fixation of the vocal cord constitutes T3 disease. Inner cortex involvement constitutes 
uh, of the thyroid cartilage constitutes T3 disease and extension into the post recurrent region also constitutes uh, the T3 disease. The exoranial disease or invasion of the total invasion of the thyroid cartilage or invasion of the pivotal fascia and casement of the carotid artery and invasion of the median skeletal structure constitutes T4B disease. We must know that the primary goal of the management is the disease control. However, the most important secondary goal is the preservation of the function of the larynx. And what is meant by preservation of function of larynx is the speech and the swallowing. The speech is an important function which is performed by the larynx and it's very important for the patient. And this function is one of the primary goals of the management. The secondary function is the uh, preservation of the sw uh, swallowing and the aspiration is prevented by the larynx. So that is the secondary objective.